Hey everybody, this is Nick, N4QAD, and what I wanted to show you today is a project I've been working on all summer. Uh, this project is a tower, a mobile tower, that uses a 2-inch receiver, standard receiver that you have in you know most vehicles if you have to pull a trailer or anything along those lines. Um, this, this tower has been kind of a labor of love. This is revision, well we're not counting. Um, so <laughs> to get to this point, I was, I was looking for something that, uh, can be put up by one person was fairly cost effective, can be moved from vehicle to vehicle without anything that has to happen to the vehicle itself, uh, made from common materials. And, um, one of my stretch goals was the ability to be able to rotate, uh, an antenna tower, a directional antenna at the top. And... Um, we can do that too. So why don't you, uh, why don't we uh, start from the beginning and uh, let's get this thing loaded up and ready to go. So we're ready to get on the field. Um, for whatever reason that you need for that day, uh, let's grab it, get it installed, and uh, get down the road. So move this guy out. It doesn't turn very well, it doesn't get very well, but grab it just like a with the wheels on the bottom like that allows you to just tilt it up and slide it in. To tell you the truth, it's actually harder to take it out than it is to actually put it in. There we go. Once you get started, just kind of wiggle her in. So once you get it all lined up, Wiggler in, and I have the rustiest old cotter key you've ever seen. So it takes a little pressure, and then this is the other piece. This is actually a 45 that goes through this piece into your hitch piece, and it's all fine threaded. So you use a T handle and crank it down, and now. There is no wobble that normally is associated with a two inch receiver like that. So it makes it really, really, really steady and um, a lot better, especially when you get the antenna up in the air. Zombies come. Arr, when you get the antenna out, because the zombies are coming. Oh yeah, we got the zombies, the zombies. Oh yeah. Alright, now that you get outside on site and you realize I already screwed up. You're supposed to take those tires off before you transport so that you don't hit anything. Uh, but uh, I'll take those off here in a second. They're just two, two clips on the side. And they pop right off. So it makes it really quick and easy to take them off when you're transporting. You should not have those on when you're transporting. So, put those up here. And then I always put the, uh, the pins right back in that way you don't get somewhere and go, what do I do with those? So, got my omnidirectional uh, antenna I'm going to put up today. This is kind of made with UHF, VHF in mind. So, planned on, um, you know, it is rotational. So, as you can see here, there's a little motor, DC 12 volt motor. And then those two bearings, so you can, if you have a directional antenna, you can turn it as you need it and uh, when you put it up. but. Today, since we're going to use the Omni, we're, we're not going to need that, but uh, definitely is there. So, I have usually use two straps, just this, and I just let it fall so that there are clamps on the side. There's two clamps, and um, that should work, but it's always nice to have some extras. This right here is my ground wire. So, as you can see, 
just grounded to the antenna because it is rubber isolated. This tower, uh, there's nothing touching the ground, so you got to be able to ground the uh, tower because as wind goes past it, you're going to create a static charge, so you have to have a way to ground it. And the little pack that's back behind here is a hammer, so. Ain't much of a hammer, but it'll work. And then the other part of it, I need to pull out, is the guy wires. So these are going to go 45 degrees off of the angle. This one, oops, this one will come this way. Let it drape out here, and then this one will be come out this way. And we'll stake those down when we get it out. Same with the other side. You know, the one thing I didn't mention was, hang on, let's get to the motorcycle real fast. We're on a beautiful, we're right beside the lake out here. It's just absolutely gorgeous, but obviously there's a lot of lake traffic. It's Memorial Day, so definitely a lot of lake traffic. But anyway, if you look on the side of the van, the way that this tower sits in my receiver, and it might be different than yours, is I want my rear end a little lower to make sure it's straight up and down. So you're never going to find a perfectly flat spot, but I know with my van, a more straight tower is where my front end is higher. So you kind of got to play on that. And I've kind of figured it'd be okay because a lot of times you'd just be back in the grass so that you can get your guy wires up. So let's put this up. Get this guy out of the way. I had to make some modifications on that guy. I'll show you that here in a minute. So, I'm going to release both latches. Like that. And then, hey, like any crank tower, just go ahead and start cranking it. Now, I wanted to be able to do this by myself when I put it up. What I found works pretty good is a standard frisbee. So, when you're putting this up, instead of it digging in the ground, you can just put the frisbee on the end, like that, and then just drive it up. And my frisbee, my frisbee stopped. I'm going to come up with a better way for it, but the biggest thing is you don't want to catch it in the ground and really put all, I mean there's already a lot of pressure on this line right now, so you definitely don't want to bind it up as you're going up. Right. This guy right here, locks it, and locks it in place. It's got a lock on the back side to make sure it goes, doesn't go anywhere. And these are stainless steel hinges that I used up here. And let me actually lower it just a touch. If you're a diamond fan, you probably recognize this guy. Come on closer here. This is just a X30, A, and I modified it just slightly, specifically the mounts. So I had some of this U-channel aluminum, and then I got some stainless steel U-bolts, and then I went and bought some uh, stainless steel wing nuts to go on there. Because this guy is standardly set up it won't do as small as three quarter inch like this. So, and you know, when I'm putting it up, it's just, it's a temporary installation. I'm not putting it up for, you know, weeks at a time in this. So let's go ahead and take the tape off here. Because the X30 requires you to take this piece off because it's, it's, Kind of meant for a, a, a 
permanent installation. So the one thing I am going to do for the, like these two bolts right here, I'm going to replace those with um, something that's got big knurls or something, make it a lot easier to uh, put it in on and off. Just slide that guy through. Put our UHF connector in. And as you can see, this I got this from DX Engineering. This cable. Uh, primarily, what I designed this for was UHF VHF. I definitely think this could be used for like a sloper dipole or something like that. But I wouldn't use this part of it because it's too flexible. And you start bending that big aluminum piece, um, you, you get into issues. So you could use you know like the 16 foot and come off like right above the uh, the bearing there and then go from there. Just lined up. There it goes. Starting to play nice. If you never used one of these X30s, or even I got uh, a different diamond, but one of these Omnis like this. They are a great little antenna. They're no bigger than they are, running the dual bands, uh, two meter, 77 meter. They're pretty awesome. So this guy slides up in there and then just tighten her down. Now the biggest thing is try to help lift it as you're tightening this down because you, I mean, if you look on here, there's a lot of pressure on there on that guy. So give it a little help, lift it while you're doing it. Once it gets up in the air, you know, it's gonna be fully vertical. It's gonna be very, very strong in that position. So as you can see, see the arch coming in there? That's good. That's gonna happen. And I, I plan for this guy to be able to bend like that. But it's not, about a five pound antenna is about all I would actually put on this thing. Three or four pound antenna would be better, so. Let's go ahead and finish cranking this guy up. And get it up in the air. Next piece is just go ahead and put in your guy wires. You don't need to crank them down. Just give yourself a little extra stability and go around and put them in. Like I said, put them in about 45. So as I was talking about before, this does have the ability to rotate an antenna as you're doing it. So these are the controls. So this is just a 12 volt um, controller right here. And then this is mounted in a box. This whole thing needs to be mounted in a waterproof box. Uh, I just have, I haven't found the right box yet for it. So for now, this is how I got it mounted. And, and all that's in here is just these two wires. So you can use any 12 volt power source. In this case, I'm just using my drone batteries. Um, if you have, you know, 12 volt for your go box or 12 volt for any, you know, anything else, you know, any kind of 12 volt battery. And then this is directional. So it even has built into this a brake. So if you set it to a direction, you're set. So this is the direction and then this is the speed it turns. So if you look up there, we can just keep adding. So if that was a directional antenna, we can set it either way. and. Obviously change the speed at which we change the direction. So if you're trying to get that far contact, throw in a Yagi up there, it'd be amazing. And really get the signal in the right direction. 
All right, you got all your contacts done for the day. Let's go tear it down. Uh, just reverse what we did before. Uh, the nice thing is with the guide wires, it does help fold it down. So let's go pull the back ones off. on the crank and right there you can see it's not going to go so you just grab your guide wire and put a little so it just goes over center there it goes And these these locks, if you look real close here, they actually are adjustable. So you can really, really bring this guy in down and tighten it up really nice. So let's flip this guy over. And as we put it down, you can just drag on that tip and ain't gonna hurt nothing. Kind of line up the bottom. There's little holes in there. Oops. Keep a little tension on that. Just so you keep everything tight. Go ahead and wrap up all your cords. And uh, you're ready to head down the road. Tape up your wire. I always tape it up before I head down the road. But that's pretty well it. You're, you're ready to head down the road.